I think once Balogun starts going again, when they do have a camp, Pepe's still going to be your number nine because of what he's doing and what he's done as of late. Mm -hmm. But that we all know everything can change in, in one second, one game, one camp. And next thing you know, Balogun is, is back at the number nine. So I think this is only good for Balogun. I actually want to give a uh, man of the match shout from Mauricio Pochettino. This movement and this is by design. And so when the players are adopting it and, and absorbing it as quickly as they have been, he deserves a lot of credit for what that first half looked like. I think he's going to be kind of disappointed with the second half. I thought it was a little bit sloppy, and I'm sure he'll yes. hold to a high standard, as he should. But uh, but there was a lot to be impressed with in that first half. Because that was, that was the moment where Jamaica had to – I was kind of curious, like, how aggressive they were going to be. They clearly started to sit back and were going to try to hit on the counter, and it just didn't matter. We played through them. There were a bunch of cones out there for, for a good portion of that first half, and I was really impressed with our approach and, and, and our movement and the way we were positioning certain players and obviously the movement amongst all those positions. So I wanted to give Pochettino another shout-out in our man-of-the-match conversation. Hey, well, job well done because he absolutely deserves it. Because, you know, when you get a new coach – of, of his quality and someone who's, you know, coached some of the biggest players in the world, you're waiting to see his, his imprint on, on this mm -hmm. national team. You're waiting to, to, mm -hmm. to clearly see, okay, this is different. I want to see, I want to see something that is not the player selection so much, but the way that the U S plays within possession, I want to see something different. Mm -hmm. Tonight was a, was clear evidence that Mauricio Pochettino is the right guy for this job. And I know there's a there's a lot of work to do and there's a long way to go. But just from this match alone, you could see that he's operating at a different level. And yeah, you the, could, the it, guys it, are, spot, are responding exactly. extremely that's well. Important. That's important yes. part of it. And, uh, and I like that we're, we're trying something. I mean, who knows if Pochettino is going to use this again, right? But at least we we have an I, a, a different idea from Poach now. The first thing we saw in this window, right, was this hybrid of defending with four and then attacking with three in the back with Jedi and Musa up the field. Tonight we got a completely different wrinkle. Is it something we added to the system, or is it something that Pochettino is going to use, or is it something he's going to keep in his back pocket in case he needs – Right. Uh, it for a specific game. We don't know yet because we don't have a big enough sample size from Mauricio Pochettino, but you have to love the fact that it's not looking the same every single game. He's given players time. I wrote down a couple of things. Attacking transition, this is all first half. I stopped after the second half, was just enjoying the game. Uh, movement in the in the, the number of forwards, uh, the number mm -hmm. of guys mm -hmm. getting forward. And when the ball turned over, we immediately – uh, we're pressuring and winning the ball back so that defensive transition became easier because we weren't spread all over the field. That graphic we put up, I, I don't know if we can throw it up again, that first half uh, spray chart. Look at Musa. Um, that, that's the, the heat map. This one here. Look at Musa's starting position, Charlie, exactly what you said before. He was not a winger. He started in that position there. That's his average position. Look at Wea, who was technically our left winger. So when the ball turns over in the middle of the field, Look at all the bodies we have to 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 uh, recover it uh, immediately again, and I I thought that was really really impressive from this group, which was aided by the fact that Anthony Robinson squeezed in the middle of the field. Yeah, it was exciting. I I, I well honestly was pumped up after that first half. Like, all right, we're cooking. We are cooking with something special. Okay, so we have a comment from Ant Man. Give it to us. He says easily the best first half we played since the World Cup. Glad we agree, Ant Man. But yep. he also adds, we have our striker. It's Pepe. Balogun can come off the bench. Now, this is the first time that Ricardo Pepe has started consecutive U.S. men's national team games since the World Cup qualifiers against Honduras and Mexico in early 2022. As we mentioned before, he scored in three straight games. Dude is on fire. We already talked about it a little bit. And I heard from resident number nine, Charlie Davies. But, Tony, what do you say about this Pepe Balogun conversation? Well, we, we judge nines on what? We say this all the time. We judge them on scoring goals. Balogun has struggled to score goals. In the end, Balogun might be a better player. But I think right now, if you're Mar Mauricio Pochettino and your staff and you have to put a game together in a month and everybody's healthy, Pepe's your guy right now. I mean, how can you – okay, has he missed some chances? Yeah, but what, what forward in the world doesn't miss chances? Do we want him to be a little cleaner? Yeah, that might be a product of – maybe not playing 90 minutes every single week, although he's getting a few more minutes um, right this season and getting a few more starts this season than last. So 
I, I can't see a world in where you come back in March, assuming everybody is then healthy again, where Ricardo Pepe's not the guy we're looking at right now until, right, he loses the trust of the manager. Right now, mm -hmm. if any number nine has the trust of the manager, it's Ricardo Pepe. He just scored in three games, right? I, I mean, yeah. Charlie, I don't know. I don't know how you could possibly take a guy off that has scored in three games when, by the way, our number nines haven't been – really, really productive game in and game out for months after months after months. We haven't seen it. Yeah, they've scored some goals, but we haven't had the guy that's scoring goals consistently. I don't know. Is it going to last? I, I, I don't know, but I'd hate I hate to so. change it. I'd hate to be the guy to change it, Charlie. Yeah. I, I have to just put a caveat on this. Right now, Epi is the starting right. striker. At said. the moment. Yeah. So – I, I think Balogun is is te technically superior than Ricardo Pepe, and I, I don't think it's even close in terms of first touch and, and on-the-ball movement, creating his own shot. However, he has to get going at Monaco, and I think he did turn a corner until this injury, which is is unfortunate. Monaco are, are flying in the Champions League. They're, they're a really good team. They have a lot of talented players. I think once Balogun starts going again, when they do have a camp, Pepe's still going to be your number nine because of what he's doing and what he's done as of late. Mm -hmm. But that we all know everything can change in, in one second, one game, one camp. And next thing you know, Balogun is, is back at the number nine. So I think this is only good for Balogun. You need to be pushed that competition of course. that this, yeah. this isn't just going to ha be handed to you. Like we all made it seem like he's the, thr he's the King. Here's the throne. Number nine. You got it. It's yours for life. Not anymore. Ricardo Pepe said, hey, I've, I've done this. I, I've been cut from a World Cup. It's not going to happen again. And so now you have a healthy competition, which is fantastic. That's what is needed to push to, to the top, whoever that number nine is for us in 2026. But right now, I think those two are above any, anyone else by miles. Yeah, it's interesting. Giorena, if he, if he can get back to what we know he's capable of, what does that look like if he comes into the team? And then, and then I thought this was interesting. I think this is a segue into a little bit of this, this topic of will players who are not in camp struggle when they actually get to break in? And will they break in? So we're up 3-0. We're then up 4-1. And, and Pochettino keeps Scally and McKenzie and Ream out there. When he had Austin Trusty, who came on in the, the first leg, um, you, had, you had Chris Richards, who I think is still nursing an injury. So I know you don't want to risk him. That makes sense. But Trusty would have been a nice one to, to bring in. I mean, just that, that as an example. If you can't break in when the team's up 4-1, I don't know when you're going to break in, to be honest. I, I, so, so I just I'm, – I'm excited for this. This is to your point. This is competition. This is what we want. This is the national team. This is what it should be about. But to your earlier point, Tones, there's something about having a consistency in the starting 11 as well so they can build that, that all-important rapport and understanding in high-pressure situations when everything's moving 100 miles an hour. Tones well, the, the 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 five subs were all the the highest players on the field, right? So he's Pepe, Wea, Pulisic, Musa, and Weston McKinney. He subbed the five most advanced players. He didn't bother with the back line, right? He's trying mm -hmm. to get them to figure it out. They struggled a little bit in the second half with the counter. Cephas was a pain in the neck again for Joe Scally. Uh, something that he'll have to work on one v one defending against a guy with that speed, or they need to do something where he gets a little bit of help, so he's not always one v one. But, um, yeah, look, uh, Pochettino wanted to see more attacking players, and that's what he got on the bat. I think Zendayas came on late, right? I don't know if it was yeah, last couple of minutes. I, I don't know how you rate that one. But, anyway, it was all attacking players. Um, so, interesting in that regard that he wanted to see even more, it seems like, uh, from that part of the field. 